Welcome back to Lebanon. Today we are exploring Beirut and we're going to be heading to Zaytuna Bay and the harbour because unfortunately and sadly it's our last day here in Lebanon. So we also wanted to talk to you about a few things and a few tips we picked up while being here. So the first thing we need to talk about is the current uh, electricity crisis here in Lebanon. So every evening around three o'clock at the moment when the lights come on every hour or so there is a couple of minutes or sometimes even less than a minute where the lights turn out. It's not a big deal at all for us as tourists. It must be horrendous if you're here as a local, uh, but it happens everywhere. In supermarkets, in restaurants, when we were in the cave yesterday in Jetta Grotto, it happened there. Um, a lot of the places have backup generators and they kick in within a few minutes. So don't let that turn you off to coming to Lebanon. So when we first looked at coming to Lebanon and Beirut, Speaking to friends and family, we got the usual reactions of like, why are you going there and, you know, is it safe? Um, we had a quick Google on um, the governmental websites and they advised against all but essential travel here. But really, why is that? Um, we looked at other bloggers that have been here and their experiences were all positive. So we decided to come and have a look for ourselves. Based on what we've seen, it looked like it was really safe. And I have to say, we have felt really safe here. We've gone out walking at night. We've traveled across the country with the tour guides. And the tour guides gave the similar, yeah, the similar sentiments that many people be put off for coming here because of what governments had advised. But I'm really glad we came here because we've had a great time. We've met so many nice people and welcoming. And of course, yeah, with most cities and most countries in the world, you need to be aware of your surroundings wherever you are. But yeah, we're really happy that we came to Lebanon and Beirut as well. It's a fascinating place. And the people are going through a lot of hardships at the moment with the economy. But hopefully things will pick up in the next few years. Safety in Lebanon. Um, this is a really tough topic because from our experience here, we felt that Lebanon has been really safe. Uh, we've walked all the streets. We've been out at night. We've been out into uh, Lebanon on tours. We've been into what a lot of countries class as the red zone, very near the Syrian border. And we've been safe and we've been fine. We've gone through 10, 20 military checkpoints and everything has been great. Obviously, we've been with a tour guide and they know what to do in these situations because it's a daily reality for them. But I'd say for us and for me, the hardest thing uh, about being here in Lebanon is seeing all of the children on the streets. Some of the streets you'll walk down, you can't get 10 yards without um, children begging you for literally the equivalent of 10 pence. You can't help them all. Um, and it's, it's been the biggest struggle for me here in Lebanon. So I would really recommend when you come, make sure you have some, some small notes and some change in your pocket that you can give to them. Before we arrived here, we thought about whether we should get a hire car as it's going to be really convenient to seeing the sights. But we had a little think and the price of renting a hire car and also the hassle that goes with it, we decided that it would actually be probably even cheaper to hire a guide or a private driver to take us round. Now, I think driving here is fine. It's a little bit chaotic, but no more chaotic than other places we've driven, or even like Paris city center could be even more chaotic. So as far as the driving is concerned, I don't think it would be a problem. But um, yeah, there's a few things to bear in mind. There's lots of military checkpoints. Like yesterday when we went to Baalbek, I think there was like five checkpoints. When, when you're with a tour guide, they're pretty much gonna wave you through because they're familiar with the people driving there. But perhaps if you're in your own car, you might get pulled aside and searched and it, it might be more of an inconvenience than anything else. But you'll probably be fine if you've got the right documentation with you. But like I say, I think the easiest is to either hire a private driver if you want that flexibility and it's probably going to end up cheaper as well. Now, the government here has frozen the exchange rate where one US dollar equals 1,500 Lebanese pound. So if you were to take, for example, 50 US dollars and change it in your home country before you came here, you'd get approximately 75,000 Lebanese pound. However, if you were to bring that same 50 US dollars here to Lebanon and you were to change it on the street at an exchange like Western Union or something like that, you'd get approximately 2.2 million Lebanese pounds, which is 30 times more money than if you were to change that before you came here. Also bear in mind, most places don't accept payment by card. And if they do, you're gonna get charged that 1,500 Lebanese pounds to the one US dollar. So you're really gonna lose out and gonna have some expensive meals. So bring enough US dollars with you here and change them on the street to get your full value. Okay, first stop we are going to is the Sursok Museum 
and the villa and then on to St Nicholas Square's and then I think we will be at the harbour where the explosion happened in 2020. So I think we need to get a taxi first, hey? Well, we just hopped into a taxi. Yeah. So good. A bit, short on, a bit short on time today before the flight happening, so just a little, a little quick, quick look out and then we'll head back home, pack up and head to the airport. Yeah, we're going to get the taxi to the first point we want to see and then just stand the back, hopefully uh, get some coffee at Zaytuna Bay as our last thing, that's something I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Ah, good, so yeah, sure, Grant. Good. Good. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. They're all so lovely here, the people. So this is the Thurfuck Museum. It's got a little bit of scaffolding on at the moment, but you can still see all the stained glass windows with the traditional... It's a really pretty building, isn't it? Yeah, traditional work put through. Stunning. If we had more time, we'd go in, but now we're going to head onto the palace. Yeah, I think if you're here for five or six days, you have time to stop by all the museums. Yeah, which would be nice. It's kind of the thing we were talking about. There's a lot of okay, children for you and your wherever friends. you go, they kind of latch onto you. Yeah. That, 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 you have any you pass? See, look. We're just walking down Guraj Street, which is what, like North Beirut Street, North East Beirut? Yeah, it's like the main shopping street and restaurant street. Lots of cool bars here in the evenings. Um, yeah. But this was all destroyed after yeah. the 2020 it's, explosion. Um, it's in the vicinity of the docks, which, which did explode, yeah. didn't they? Was, uh, we'll go say a little bit more about that when we get close to it. But they've rebuilt most of it. As you can see from the new facades here, it's looking pretty good. Still more, really good. more work to go, the scaffolding up here. But they've done a great job of restoring it back. Yeah. I think our tour guide yesterday said 80% yeah, has, has been repaired. repaired, which is brilliant. Really and it's great. been done really nicely too. So we're going to have a little walk down here, see if we can find some breakfast slash lunch. Yeah. And then we'll head on deck down to the docks and make our way back to the hotel from there. Okay, like we said, 90% uh, has been rebuilt. Yeah, There's just a few remnants of the explosion left. But uh, yeah, like this petrol station, I think is quite iconic in the area. Yeah, and there's quite a few buildings still looking worse for wear, but they are repairing them, yeah. which is really heartwarming to see. I'm yeah. glad that they're making the effort now. And they're repairing them really nice. The new ones they've restored look really beautiful. Yeah. But if you can see over here, you've still got all the glasses missing from a lot of the buildings from the explosion.
So we uh, are at a place called The Barn. It's a healthy eatery here in Beirut. It's packed inside, but they're just looking to find us a table and the menu looks awesome. So we've stumbled across this lovely cafe restaurant. It's called The Barn. And it's absolutely bustling in here. Yeah. Really great atmosphere. It's great. I would say it's like high-end Beirut. And the coffees are still around $2.50 for like an oat milk latte, so like a specialty. And the traditional Lebanese coffee is like $1. Sandwiches are like $6 for something without meat. And if you want meat, it really does shoot the price up, where it goes up to like $15 to $17. So yeah, definitely the meat is quite expensive here in, uh, in Beirut. Here we go. You see? I'm definitely getting an oat milk flat white, my favourite coffee order. But that's one of the two. I know you have not been out to buy them recently. <laughs> so we are on the St. Nicholas steps, which apparently are the longest steps in the Middle East. Acclaimed, yes. Acclaimed, Acclaimed. longest steps. I don't know about them. <laughs> It's uh, famous steps. They do art exhibitions here throughout the well, throughout the summer. I think there's none yeah. at the moment. There's lots of cool graffiti, plants, and yeah, it's a really nice stairway. Yeah, it's kind of a residential area, so I think it's mostly used for people just getting home. All right, just heading down the St. Nicholas steps now. It's uh, looking like they're going to make it into a really cool area. There's a few cafes and shops being built and restored, so maybe in a, a year or two, it's going to be bustling down here. Yeah, next we're heading down to the harbour. There is a brand new boat that's open called Logos that we want to check out. Is it always like a fun boat with cafes and stuff? Yeah, I think so. And it, you pay like a small fee to get on and then you can see the whole harbour from there. So All it right. should be good Let's fun. Let's head down to the beach then. Another really cool place over there, look, called the neighbourhood. Hello. 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 I think we can go down this one maybe. Yeah, down. Yep. <laughs> it's a bit of a curb on this. <laughs> <laughs> you got like, used to it now. Yeah. yeah. My thighs have definitely had a workout on this trip just from the curbs alone. <laughs> Just behind us here is the port area of Beirut. It's also the naval base, so we're filming a little bit far away from it, so not to get in any trouble. Yeah. But you can see there the, the silos that exploded in August 2020, causing a gigantic explosion. And I think it caused like over $15 billion worth of damage to yeah. the seafront. Over 300,000 people were left homeless because of it. There was hundreds and hundreds of deaths and even more injuries caused by the explosion. I think it was nitrate. Yeah, the um, ammonium nitrate was being stored in the silo. I think it was there for over a year. Yeah. Uh, they didn't really know what to do with it at the time. They were trying to, I don't know, find out who owned it or what, yeah, how I it think... was going to get into the country. Yeah. But it caught fire and, and caused, caused that, that gigantic explosion. Apparently yeah. the explosion was felt for like miles like in Israel and Syria and even Cyprus saw the explosion yeah. like the cloud it was huge 3.3 magnitude was like an earthquake magnitude of the shock of the shock oh wow that's insane um so there's there's a boat that's been overturned and a lot of destruction we filmed a little bit but they are repairing it and they are yeah. doing everything they can and it should be really respected yeah, for Lebanon. I have to say for in two and a half years the um, the reconstruction work that's been going on there is absolutely fantastic which is a good testimony to the country though. Yeah. Last coffee in Zaytuna Bay. Yeah. Last coffee here. We're just going to go for a little one last walk on the promenade there, see the seat. Yeah. And then we will be heading off. To Cyprus? Yeah. To Cyprus. It's been awesome time here, hasn't it? It really has. It's nothing like I expected. It's bigger yep. than I expected. Yep. I think Beirut itself, at least two days, I think, for, for comfortably getting around. Yeah. Maybe I, four if you want to go to all the museums and things. Yeah. Like. And I didn't expect as many luxury high rises yeah. as there is. Like, you walk through the city, it's just 
sometimes it feels like a Dubai and then sometimes it feels like you're in like a tiny little city. It's it's such a contrast between the two. Sure I didn't is, expect yeah. that at all when yeah. coming here. And I also didn't expect the people to be as welcoming as they are. Absolutely, everyone has been really friendly. The police, the military, everyone. shop owners, restaurants, taxi drivers. Taxi drivers. Yeah. Everybody has been so nice. I'm a little bit sad to be leaving, but I'm very excited for what Cypress has because we yeah. are hiring a car in Cypress. So yeah, we we'll have a bit more freedom with the car. It's like back to traditional Sean and Emily travels <laughs> <laughs> on the road. But it's been a welcome change. Absolutely, yeah. And um, yeah, any preconceived ideas that we had before coming to Lebanon, they've all gone. Yeah. Um, when I think back to like when we first started researching it and what yeah. we were reading online and what certain websites were telling us and news articles, it's it's wrong, Absolutely, the media yeah. perception. I mean, still be cautious still and be take, cautious. take some of it as a, I don't know, as a warning, but. Yeah, but I'm as cautious here as I am in Paris city centre Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So, but there's no news article saying that Paris is yeah. a terrible place, so. Like we didn't, I didn't feel threatened or anything when we walked. Yeah. We walked around at night quite a few times mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. First night we were here, we didn't. No. But um, after we got a feel for it, it's, yeah, it wasn't really a problem. I think that's a very cautious and wise thing that we do whenever we travel. We we always feel out the city, even if someone says, oh no, it's completely safe. We always get that feeling for ourselves. First. Yeah. And that's important. Exactly. You yeah. might come here and be like, oh no, I, I don't feel comfortable. It's you. How we feel is different. It's the same with the driving of the cars. You would feel comfortable driving here. Yep. I would not feel comfortable driving here. Exactly. Or someone yeah, else so. would Just get come for a day or two, get the feel, and then if you love it, you can come back and explore in your own way as well. It's Absolutely. A good option. Yeah. So that's it for our time in Lebanon. We'll be leaving Beirut shortly. I hope you've enjoyed the videos and if you're thinking of visiting Lebanon yourself and um, we didn't give any information that you need, just drop us a comment below and hopefully we can get back to you. But as for us, we are off to the airport now and heading on to our next country, which is just over there. Actually, we are going to Cyprus, so we will catch you in the next video. Yep, see you soon.